7.42 here on this uh, Friday morning wake-up call. Uh, it is time for Fry at the Fuzz. First, we'll do a password real quick. We had one incorrect guess. It was Sweden. Wait, turn your mic on. I, ho I hope you have all the uh, passwords with you because I left them in the other studio. I, uh, uh, Monday was down. Tuesday was staff. Yep. Wednesday was... It's always uh, Wednesday. Day. Wednesday okay. was day. Thursday was... Uh, what was yesterday? I just, just had it and it wasn't yesterday. Thursday was six, and today was poll, and the super passer two in, two correct ans answers was flag, flag staff, flag poll, flag day, flag down, and six flag. You like doing oh six flag. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you like doing that where it's word like association yeah. type thing. Right. Yep. Now I toss it over to you. For, Thank you, uh, Fred Fuss. All right. Uh, in studio, of course, uh, with us on Fridays, somebody from the Elgin Police Department, usually uh, Chief Swoboda, but um, he is not with us this morning. But um, filling in amply, probably, as we've said before, probably better. <laughs> probably better. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure he's listening. probably listening, so right. I'm, I'm going to say I'm going to say at least a little, a couple steps below. He's, yes, he's but I'm going to do my best. He's probably getting the superhero outfit with the, with the cape and everything ready for the Fourth of July parade. <laughs> Absolutely, Isn't right. that he jumps off floats and makes yep. arrests and yes. stuff like that. Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, a few years ago. Actually, I think that was the first His year. First year, year chief. Chief. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Hi, Jeff. Good morning. We miss you. <laughs> Um, De uh, Deputy Chief Bill Wolf with us. Also, we have uh, Sergeant Sunny from the um, Traffic Division now. Correct. All right. So, um, gentlemen, I want to we'll, we'll get to kind of what's going on this weekend, uh, this week, right? Kind of a week long plus worth of events going on. Yep. You know, um, I don't not heated. That's not, not the word I want. But um, you had your Chiefs meeting on Monday. I yes. follow that on Facebook. Yep. Every like three seconds, something comes up, and it's like, all right, enough. All right, right, right. enough. <laughs> yeah, you know, it was, it was a really good turnout to that to that meeting. Quite a few it people like there. It, yeah. There was a lot of questions, right? Absolutely, yeah. So we'll talk about that a little bit. A um, couple smaller pieces, just to, I like to tie up. You know, things that uh, we talked about. See how that went. Um, last week we had um, uh, kind of what I would refer to as a smash and grab, mm -hmm. um, where somebody basically broke a window to a business, grabbed some stuff. And then fled the scene in high speed on his bicycle. Right, right. <laughs> as, as fast as you can go on a bike, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, usually it's a car that they use right. for getaways or something like that. But this was a 14-year-old. Yes. Um, the best part of, on this was, as I talk, you know, we talk with Jeff, we talk with you, is is the involvement from the community. Yes, absolutely. And, and in this case, perfect, right? Yes. And you know, it, it is something you know. It, it, we all talk about it. You know, the chief talks about it regularly. Is that you know, we stress the importance of, of having the community as, as a partner. And so many of these arrests are a result of, of people seeing things and, and calling things out. And, you know, we, we've talked about, the, you know, the opposite where, you know, after the fact, we've, we've talked to neighbors that have said, yeah, you know what, I saw some people kind of looking suspicious or they were peeking in cars and we weren't sure what we should do. You. So we didn't do anything. And, and next thing you know, there's 10 cars broken into. And, and just that, that one little call, you know, can make all the difference of the world of making an arrest or preventing... You know, crimes for happening for your neighbors, and and we really appreciate you know situations like this where somebody calls in and we're able to make an arrest. It's great. And this was very timely. It was just after twelve thirty in the morning, um, just after a little after midnight, and somebody was around who have seen it. And that's not your typical time when you might get a lot of witnesses to right. something, right? I mean, right. you know, twelve thirty at night. One, you know, as it gets later, there's fewer and fewer people out, and right. it's dark. Yes. So it's hard to really yes, see that's it true. clearly. So I, to me, this was like perfect. I right. was like, wow, you know, this is great. Yeah, absolutely. And it's one of those things too is, you know, you know, when somebody somebody is out at that time, you know, if you're you know, coming out from no, work or whatever, yeah. exactly. And I mean, right. it's, it's you know, most of the time, especially, uh, you know, um, a 14-year-old that age is out past curfew and they shouldn't be out in the first place. Curfew. So. Good, great question. And I know it's different by community. Mm -hmm. um, 10.30? Well, in Elgin, we, uh, our, okay. our curfew laws are, are in we, line with the state. Okay. So, so it's... During the uh, weekdays, it's uh, 11 p.m., and on the weekends, it's it's midnight. Okay. Um, and so we we also have... Uh, my mom always held me to those. <laughs> yeah, always. exactly. Well, that's good. I was that's being good. the only one in my high school. <laughs> like, it was so aggravating, but now I'm doing the same with my son. Yep. You, know, you can't be out that late because that's, that's for curfew. It's yes. like, what? Yep. Yeah. I, I remember constantly, you know, my parents saying, nothing good comes out of being out past midnight. <laughs> right. And, and a lot of times they are right. And, and that's exactly. why those curfew That's why you wanted there. to be out. Well, right. <laughs> Want to take the bad stuff. Yeah, and you know we, we actually have uh, during during the summer months our school resource officers because they're not in school they do some other functions and one of them is 
is that they're a big part of running the Kids United program. But another thing that they do is is that um, they are part of the curfew detail. Okay. So they're out there actively looking for kids that are out past curfew, or or you know our midnight shift that's out there. And when they come across kids that are out past curfew, they'll call the uh, school resource officers for assistance and since they kind of specialize in that. And they also maybe also have a relationship with those kids or have met them or have interacted with their parents or whatever, right? So. Absolutely. And the other thing that, that we do as well is that kids that, that are, are chronic offenders, we actually um, make um, find the parents as well. There's a parental responsibility uh, um, ordinance in Elgin. And so we've actually charged parents uh, that really haven't made no attempt to, you know, try to rein their kids in and, and keep them in for, um, for curfew. Shell casings uh, reported there were some shots fired uh, last Thursday, so not yesterday, but a week before that. Yep. Um, police uh, were able to recover some 25 caliber casings um, in the 600 block East Chicago Street. Um, again, witnesses, you know, caller called police. Right. Um, Silver van pulled away, men running towards it, another gray sport utility vehicle. So, I mean, there was some good information, it sounds like. Right. Where do where does Elgin uh, stand with that? Uh, well, that's, that is something that our gang unit is investigating. They okay. do have um, some suspects, uh, but there have not been any arrests made at this and, point. And no injuries, though, either? No, no, no injuries. Nobody was hit. No. Okay. Um, last thing I wanted to touch on before we get into uh, some of the other information that's going on the next week, which is a lot. Um, this was, I think, just when Tuesday night, um, undercover officers, um, which to me, I don't know, I think the movie was Blow, right? Like, yeah. Whenever I think of an, <laughs> an undercover police officer, I, I think of that movie. Um, all the respect in the world for what these guys do. I mean, so dangerous. Yes, it's extremely um, dangerous. Guys and girls. Absolutely. You know, right? there's, there's both. So, um, you know, here you see, it's like, oh, he bought one ecstasy pill, you know, but there's a lot more to it than that. Probably. Uh, in this case, I mean, from the the release that was going on, uh, said, you know, that the, the girlfriend admitted that that's their job. They just drive around. They have 10 or 15 regulars, and right. they supply them this. And, the, you know, the boyfriend admitted to, you know, that we're going to be moving to Florida. You know, it's just, this is what they do. This right. is their life. And, yep. and they're 18 and 20. Yeah. Um, anything you can speak to on this? I mean, was this... Uh, I always ask Jeff, like, is there a time when you say... You know, we're, what's that line where you say, all right, we're just going to kind of keep this as information and, and keep working it versus we just got to stop this now? Well, you know, one one thing, too, is, is that when we actually have a, a deal like this and somebody delivers to an undercover directly, the, the fine goes up. Um, because if somebody's just in possession of it, that's it's a lower class. Uh, if, if we can prove that you're in possession of it and you have the intent to deliver it, that's a higher class. But you actually deliver drugs um, to an undercover or it's confirmed you deliver it to uh, somebody else, that, that fine goes up. So when we have the ability to have somebody deliver drugs directly to an undercover, we rarely ever pass that up because that, that even if it's a small amount of drugs, is generally the, uh, the class of... Uh, crime it is, is is pretty high and so those types of things we were going to pass up there are other situations where yeah we want to go after bigger fish and things like that um if, if we you know and, and some of these you, you you start out with just delivery of one you know uh, you know in this particular case one pill and maybe that person gives us who their supplier is and then we go after that person and get their supplier and, and so on down the line and so sometimes these little things can lead to, to big things down the road with um with this, the other, the other thing I, 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 I seem to notice anyway with a lot of the um, arrests that seem to be made with uh, undercover involved mm -hmm. is the, the additional charge of within a thousand feet of a school right. or within a thousand feet of a church. I'm gonna, uh, is that something, and I don't know who sets up where the buys are going to take place, but when you're working with that, is that something that the Elgin Police or any police department looks at and says, hey, let's, let's get this within... A thousand feet of this area, you know, two blocks over, but we're still within because there's an additional charge. Right. It, just because you want as many things as possible that might stick, because you never know how it's going to work sure. out once it gets to the, the courts, right? And sure. I don't mean to put you on the spot, <laughs> but I'm always curious about that. Well, it, it, it's one of those things where we, we do quite a few, uh, you know, deals in different places, and, and if it does happen to be within a thousand feet of a school, then... Uh, all the better. <laughs> Very political. <answer. laughs> Very good. All right. I don't even know where that one goes. I'll just leave it alone. Um, Sergeant Sonny's with us uh, today. Sonny, sorry. And um, 
We want to talk a little bit about uh, some activities going on this week. First of all, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for thanks for coming in. Um, you can tell we just kind of have some fun here and you know try to spread as much information and good information as possible. And it's you seem to have a ton. So I'm going to kind of turn it over to you, I guess, <laughs> right? I mean, we've got uh, 4th of July coming up uh, next week, middle of the week, right? Thursday, Friday? Thursday, right? Friday. Yep. Um, July 3rd and 4th, there's some activities going on. There's going to be some roads closed in Elgin. There's going to be some stuff going on at the park. There's going to be all, all kinds of things, right? Correct. Um, that's for next week, but uh, earlier this week, starting on Monday, uh, we started, the traffic division started uh, in conjunction with the Illinois State Police, our... Uh, Independence, drive sober, or get pulled over and click it or ticket uh, campaign oh for, for, <laughs> for this week. It runs from, it started again, I said, started on Monday and it runs up through July the 6th. Um, what intersections is that at again? <laughs> various <laughs> intersections across town. I'm sure Every some, year I ask, but I never <laughs> get an answer. Some have probably already seen us out there um, at certain intersections doing a, a again, I want to stress that it's a safety checkpoint. It's yes. where uh, uh, just generalized traffic safety um we do daytime and nighttime ones um actually tonight will be our actual roadside safety checkpoint um, in elgin at the undisclosed location <laughs> um, <laughs> that will run from nine at night to two in the morning and then um again we will be uh, out throughout the weekend doing um some checkpoints at various intersections and we also do a roving Type of uh, patrol during okay. during the weekends and up and through through uh, July. I'm always July curious with this, and, and obviously you're you're at these. Well, I mean, you're you're kind of running it right as the sergeant over the traffic division now. Um, Correct. When when you've got an area set up, how often do you see a car kind of pull off and go another way? Is it common? I mean, in my mind, I'm thinking. It's not as common as you think. I'm like, I don't even want to go through it. I might have my license. I might have my seatbelt on. I may not be drunk. And I'm just like, man, really? I got to go through this? I want to go down this street instead. It's not. Most people, through my experience, are compliant with it. It's very few and far between that actually turn, try to go the other other way. When we do the roadside um, checkpoints, we do have various other cars roaming out in the area to, to, gotcha. address, to address that situation. The actual checkpoints that you see uh, at the uh, intersections, most people are very compliant with that. And one of the, the uh, targets for the um, uh, intersection related checkpoints is we're looking for, for seatbelt usage. Right. And uh, actually, believe it or not, we have found that seatbelt compliance is, is, is up. It's very high. It's, it's very like high. well over 93%, I think, are statistics nationwide anyway. Correct. Well, I know just in Elgin itself, we just did a follow up one at the intersection of Chicago and. Uh, it was a follow-up, and the survey actually showed that 92% of the vehicles that went through that intersection were compliant wearing their seatbelts. And just to share, there was roughly 530 vehicles that wow. went through that inter intersection. So, so it wasn't like it was 10 people and nine had their seatbelt on. Right. right? So, I mean, that's, so a very, yeah. that's a very high compliance rate. And even nationwide, seatbelt usage has has gone up uh, tremendously. What's the fine for not wearing your seatbelt again? It, it varies okay. uh, depending on if it's a compliance ticket or an actual state ticket. So the, the range can vary anywhere between 50 to 120. Um, one of the bigger things that we are seeing though, seatbelt related, is children not being in seatbelts. Now when I say not being in seatbelts, I also mean not even being in a child restraint seat, gotcha. any type of, of uh, ways. And again, that varies too on age and weight of when a child has to be in, in a in a uh, restraint type seats, but again, we're seeing kids not even being in a seatbelt whatsoever. Um, it's one of the things that drives me absolutely crazy when I see, you know, sometimes kids standing up in the back seat, you know, smaller obviously, because right. they can't yeah, be nine right. or whatever, and I'm like, man, that's just, there's a there's a yeah. projectile right there. So, you know, absolutely. Yeah. Th that's the, the biggest thing that we're seeing right now is front seat passengers, uh, driver and passenger, high compliance, right? We're starting to really see the the rear seat passengers and the children not mm. being in the in the uh, in the restraint seats in any type of way, and that that is the law. They have to be anybody in a vehicle has to be wearing a seat. Belt. Sometimes you know, depending on the kid's age, you just expect. You know, I, I'll throw myself under the bus. You know, we taken off the other day to go to a soccer tournament with the whole family. So, wife's driving, I'm in the front seat. Got my daughter and my son in the back. My son's 15. Get a couple miles down the road, I look back. Jake, put your seatbelt on. Uh, you know, we get, he's like, right. oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, 
<laughs> my daughter was all done up at nine, you know, and, and she was in her little booster and everything. And, and you really think about it, it's less than five seconds, yeah. two seconds to, to put the seatbelt on and, and, and statistically show it, it shows that it will save your life in the crash. Uh, one of the things we would like to stress that if you do go out this holiday weekend or next holiday weekend, and if you do decide to drink, make sure you have a designated driver. And if you don't have a designated driver, call a taxi, call a friend. Um, you know, nighttime is is usually the time where we see I most guess. most uh, traffic fatalities related to uh, uh, intoxication. Um, overall, I just actually looked at it this morning. Uh, traffic fatalities in the state of Illinois are actually down right now, which is good. We've seen a uh, um, we've seen a good dip this year. Um, traffic fatalities overall are down when you compare them to the 70s, 80s, and 90s. But there has been just a little bit of increase in traffic fatalities uh, each year. Um, and a lot of that probably is based on cell phone usage, mm -hmm. um, texting, driving you know, on your cell phone. And of course, now I still we, see that so much. Yeah, I, I do a lot of driving for my job and right. see people with their cell phones up to their head. And I'm just put that thing down. I mean, just get it Bluetooth. They're not expensive. You right. can get them for like 15 or 20 bucks now, you know? Yeah, correct. Um, so again, um, don't text and drive, don't use any phone. Um, don't talk on your phone while driving. Another thing too that we, we're commonly seeing when talking on the cell phone, people think hands-free means not putting Speaker it. Speaker phone. Speak, still have no. it in your hand, not up to your ear. Or another big thing that people forget is the law basically states that you cannot use the phone whatsoever when driving. So that means when you're stopped at the red light, you can't pick up the phone to make a phone call. You can't text. You, if you're going to do that, pull over to the side of the road, put your car in park, or find a safe place to park and, and make the call Call there. Interesting. Yeah. No, that's uh, probably very well glossed over by the general public because I don't think about it. Sometimes I get to a stoplight and I pull up, you know, I just had three dings. What's going on? And right. I pull up the seat, so I'm breaking the law. Yes, when I do that, correct. Yeah. It, it, the law. Um, What's the statute of limitations? <laughs> I'm already right. right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the law we'll talk that afterward. The car has to, be, has to be in park, and you have to be off on the huh. side of the road. So, Interesting. Um, on that. Uh, some other things we have next week is very very busy. Um, make plans ahead. July third, starting starting July third, July fourth. Uh, going to be busy. The Grand Victoria again is having uh, concerts. Festival on. Park going to be um, packed, right? Going to be yes. packed. They have a they have a um, concert going on July third. Um, then July 4th is a big day in the morning and in the uh, um, afternoon uh, or evening time for that matter. Uh, we have the parade in, in the morning, uh, which will basically be closing down Douglas Street from uh, Slade all the way down to, to Chicago. Uh, there'll be some staging areas for the for the float. So, uh, again, the uh, traveling. Yeah, no more going no, on. No, that's it's going on next Friday. The, and The route is on City of Elgin's webpage correct, as well. Correct. It, so. it, it is, and it also shows where the staging area are. There's there's a map uh, of, uh, of the staging area. And then later on that night, uh, which is probably the bigger plans, is the again, the Grand Victoria is going to be having a concert, and then after the concert, there's going to be a, uh, um, a fireworks show. Um, so there, there's going to be a pretty good crowd there for that. So uh, my suggestion for that, get there early. For, for parking purposes, and then again after the concert, uh, be patient. Uh, but we have a, we have a very well planned, uh, put in effect, and hopefully we'll get everybody out of there within one within a half hour time frame. What's the uh, what's the plan for firework enforcement? Because you know there's people that travel down to Indiana or other places and get these fireworks and bring them back and. Correct. Everyone gets six oh. packs free. It, you know, yeah. I don't know. You they, see these they signs. Are illegal. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No matter where illegal. you get them, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, they the are entire illegal. state of Illinois. In the state of Illinois, and uh, I know the Elgin Police Department, we have a pretty strong stance when it comes to fireworks, uh, the use of fireworks. Um, uh, we actually have basically firework squad cars sent out there, or personnel sign out, sent out there, and uh, they've actually already started, so they'll be out there starting now, and, and I think they're actually going to go until, uh, well, until next week and then the following week too is there a standard that. fine for someone who in possession or yeah well there's, there's two things there's there's a state law where we, where we could potentially charge somebody with the state law and, and just it's actually, yeah it's actually a, a jailable offense wow we have a city ordinance and generally we we start out with the city ordinance most people that we cite they're gonna get a hundred dollar fine under the city ordinance but if they're repeat offenders that fine can go up or they potentially could be charged with the state law as well which is an actual misdemeanor type offense and mm. so we take it very seriously 
We're, uh, we're, you know, like Kevin said, we're going to have officers out there that are going to be responsible for just going out and enforcing that law and, and writing people tickets for, for fireworks. So uh, we also sent letters out to the people that were, were cited last year to remind them. You did that last that, year, too. Yes, yeah. exactly. So yeah. hey, you know, we're going to keep doing this. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so we're going to be out there. Don't shoot them off. Yeah. And, um, you know, and it's a serious thing. It's, uh, you know, we've had incidents where people have been hurt in one case I think a couple of years ago someone lost yeah. a couple of fingers or something right it was a child yeah, yeah. very seriously hurt and and uh, you know there's been, we've had fires and, and various other things and so it's it's we, we really take it serious I know selfishly you know as somebody who gets up fairly early in the morning it's one of my biggest pet peeves is I'm trying to sleep and some neighbors shooting off their fireworks and I, I can't sleep and I just keep looking at the clock going all right I've got Four hours of sleep now. Yeah. Right now I've got three hours. You know, yes. It, again, selfishly, it, it's annoying. You know, right. And I don't think about they could be getting hurt. Right. Maybe while I'm trying to fall asleep, I'm thinking to myself yes. maybe that might happen. You know, but right. yeah. You know, the other thing too that, that we've we've had you know some years where we've had some neighborhoods where it was so prevalent there were so many fireworks being shot off that it actually created the the smoke haze in, in, in the air right. and so you know you may have somebody that has breathing difficulties and things like that and that smoke you know affects that so it's another you know side of it that's you know reason why we enforce the law. Um, last thing we had on here is I know there were some changes and this was um, we're kind of over time but that's all right. You guys, what are they? Yeah, exactly. Oh, right. <laughs> um, there's been some changes to the requirements on the, um, and this was something that came out of, at, at the Chiefs meeting, right? Um, or it may have started before that, but that's when I heard about it. Yeah, well, yeah. That was it was discussed at the Chiefs meeting, and then actually the the last city council meeting, the uh, there was uh, some discussion the chief had with the city council about uh, the police department's recommendations for changing the the hiring. Uh, Criteria exactly, yeah. and so you know, currently as it stands, everybody that applies to be an eligible police officer needs a bachelor's degree, and um, we we feel very strongly about education. Uh, our, our police and fire board that we work you know very closely with, uh, they they believe strongly in education, but we also see that there's some some other real life experience that we believe is you know an important attribute to being a police officer. Well, that could potentially be as valuable to education, and, and those. Um, areas are people that have military experience, people that are previously uh, or currently police officers, uh, people that are that have been uh, community service officers for the police department, and then people that have done a certain number of years in our Explore program. And so those recommendations were given to the council. The, the council unanimously voted that they are in favor of, of making those changes to our, our hiring, and, and now it, uh, it's going back to the, the Police and Fire Commission and to actually put those rules in, in place and, and so make So there's kind of steadfast rules. So right. like X number of years of this qualifies you as this much education. Or right, 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 exactly. Right now, it's kind of a... Who knows? Right, 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 exactly. And you know, and, and you know, we we've always worked very well with our police and fire commission, and, and they they're 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 great people, and they, they volunteer a ton of time because they're they're responsible for hiring all the police and, and firefighters in in the entire city, and going through those interview process and everything is, is an extensive amount of time that they put in, and and uh, we truly appreciate you know the, the work that they do, and it's it's uh, it's great, and we and we're hoping that that you know we can all get on the same page and. Get these laws or the changes to the uh, ordinance in effect, and um, and uh, because we're going to be hiring for police officers here very soon, so uh, we're probably going to be those. You know, anybody listening that, that wants to become a police officer, or knows somebody wants to be, spread the word. Uh, probably, you know, yeah. in uh, you yes, know, late summer, early fall, we're going to be starting the testing process, and uh, we need we need good people to, to join the Elgin Police Department. Great. Sergeant Sunny, anything else you wanted? Uh, you got, again, Just a reminder, when hundreds driving, of pages there. <laughs> when you're driving, buckle up before yeah. you put that car in drive. And stay safe. Stay safe and don't shoot off fireworks and uh, have some patience if you're coming to the fireworks downtown. And uh, we will all have a great and safe uh, 4th of July. Well, you guys have a great one. Uh, Thanks. Thank you very much you for too. coming in. Thank you. You're listening to 1410 WRMN. And Elgin.